Welcome to episode 21 of the Casual Shooters Podcast. I have my usual cohorts with me, Leo and Huggy. Say hello. Hello. What's up? Today we have another guest, another great guest, Frank Zhu, also known as Frank the Tank. Awesome guest. A canic shooter. Woohoo! So we're going to bring him in and ask yeah. him a whole bunch of questions and interrogate him like everybody else. Hey, Frank, you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, everybody. Hi. My name is Frank. Shoe, like you said, we're in a shoe. Like, that's the Chinese name. And uh, I am a current uh, Kenneck shooter. Yeah. What do you guys want to know about introduction? You can, you can fire any question and ask me. Okay. Well, yeah. let's just start with our regular stuff. Then you, you well, well, we... We were debating actually when before you got here is if we we're going to even ask you your nationality, but you said it. <laughs> so, and how do you say your last name one more time? Shu, like wearing a shoe. Okay. And shoe. I'm from Taiwan, not China. I love China, but not China. <laughs> <laughs> Taiwan. This is definitely going to be a video podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're starting off the right way. We okay. are. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I am from Taiwan. So I won and I moved here in 2013. Got my first Canic in 2016, right after the election. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And then start shooting Canic in 2017 and then joined Canic team in 2019. Yeah. So, and then start shooting for Canic. So how, okay, two questions because we had it, but we had it further down our list. But since we're talking about it now... We're going to go ahead and throw it out. One, how did you come across Canic? Two, how did Canic come across you, meaning as a sponsor? Ooh, that's a very, very good question. At 2016, um, you know, it's either we have Trump or we have Hillary at that time. And then I just become a green card holder. And I was going to... I was trying to pick up a first gun for home defense. And my wife and I decided, you know what? It's time to buy the first gun. And once we bought the first gun and went to the went to the store, I, I do a lot of research. I watch a lot of video. And I'm like, Jerry Mitchell is holding the MMP. Maybe I'll look at the MMP. So I went to Smith & Wesson. I know what I want. I, I don't care about what the gun store will push me to Glock and everything. I'm just like, I want to get the MMP. And then they say, okay. And I say, well, how much? And they show me the money. I'm like, oh, that's kind of expensive. And then at that time, we don't know MNP is that expensive. So it turned out like they said, oh, yeah, it's about the Glock level. But hey, we have a gun that you want to try it out. It's the it's the Canic TP9 V2 at that time. Now it revert to VA. So it was V2 at that time and also TP9 SF. So I'm like, oh, okay. They have a rental gun, so I went out and then shoot a couple of rounds. I'm like, oh, that's kind of that's kind of nice. But I never heard about Canic. What is Canic? Who is Canic and why Canic? I'm like, I don't understand. I still like MMP. And I keep telling my wife, I like that MMP. I don't want to get that Canic. It's cheap. If people talk about cheap, it's like tourists, it's crap. So, <laughs> so that's why that's why I'm like trying to like talk to my wife at the gun store, deciding which one do we get. And you know what? If you have listened to your, all your wife's advice, happy wife, happy life. So <laughs> I got the Canic. Afterwards, I got the Canic and decided, you know what? Yeah, it's time. It's time to go to the range and try, try it out. I don't like the static 25-yard range. It's so boring. Oh, you go there. It's just like un unbox everything, load it up, put the target on. Send out the target, and then you're like, oh, okay, 10 yards. Bang, bang, bang. Did I shoot anything? Pull it back. I'm like, ah, oh, I missed. I hate that. I hate that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so that's why I started, like, searching on YouTube. I'm like, oh, is there any, like, tactical training, something like that, tactical or competition? And then I came across the, came across the YouTube. I think at that time it's Top, top Shot. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yep. So there's like Max Michelle, JJ Rakaza, uh, Jerry yeah. Mitchell, like Lena Mitchell. It's just like so a bunch of something like, oh, this is cool. So, so after I watched the entire 
four seasons, I believe, four seasons on Top Shot. And I'm like, oh, this is something I wanted to do. I want to do this. <laughs> so look online and found there's some local USPSA club just at Salt Lake, like not even like 45, not even an hour drive from my house. So decided to start trying out and uh, with my TP9 SF at that time. And I know that they're coming out with the competition model. Yeah. Because I remember at that time, the sponsor shooter was Corin, Corin Mosher. Mo, Mosher. Yeah, it's a, it's a lady shooter. And she shoots for three guns and everything. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yep. She started carrying competition gun, and I kind of like just found her on Facebook, and I was like, hey, where's the candidates want to come up with the competition gun? And then she just like, uh, yeah, it should be out already, because shot show. Everybody saw that, oh, it's out already, but it takes mm. long time. So... I think in March 2017, I got my first Canic TP9 SFX, and it's the same Canic I use in National when you guys saw it. 40,000 rounds nice. and still going. There you yeah. go. Wow. The last not bad for a cheap gun, right? Yeah, not, exactly. oh, not, not bad for the cheap gun. And I think, I think I am probably one of the first people in Utah got the Canic because my serial number is still less than 1,000. Oh wow! Yeah, I keep like asking my local gun shop. Like, if you if you have this, let me know. I want to buy it, and no matter how much, I need it. So <laughs> I got my candy mm. at that time in March. I remember March, twenty seventeen. Yeah, so that's how I get into the competition shoot. Awesome. I know the next question you'll be like, "Oh, how do you get sponsored?" Um, you know, you know, I want to tell everybody including listener, if you are interested in competition shooting, if you are wanted to be successful, um, here, here, here's, here's what I like to give people advice on that part is it's not about the status. It's not about, it's not about, um, for example, yes, J, um, Jerry Michalik is my main man crush. It's my celebrity crush for sure. I want to be like him because he's so cool and uh, he shoots so well and he just a like, really nice grandpa. And I'm just like, <laughs> love this guy. So you want to be, and uh, oh, I want to be like him. <laughs> you have to start growing your mustache. I can't. I, I tried it. I just, I just like trying to like take all my mustache. Uh, I grow for a week. It's just like Mexican mustache. It's like nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> I'm Asian, but for some reason, like I'm Mexican. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah, right. Sorry for for listener, but yeah, I, I try to grow beard and mustache. I can't, so that's why. But 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 again, like I said, like yes, I was a rookie shooter in 2017. I have a dream, and and I want to be like Jerry Mitchell, and that start the spark. So I started like creating my social media posts. I uh, create my Instagram. I start a YouTube channel. I start my Facebook page. I'm just like, I don't care. I have a thick skin. If you like me, you like me. If you don't like me, it's fine. Right? Right? I will find my audience. So I start creating my co kind of competition journey and um, post on Instagram. I start seeing some people because I keep tagging Canic, Canic, Canic. And I feel like they probably will be like, who is this guy? So I think they start like looking at me. And one of the guy, he one of the guy that like, he basically followed me on my Instagram from Turkey. And I'm like, who is this guy? And I mm. found out that he is basically uh one of the general manager. That they they're pretty nice. They're pretty nice. They say, I'm the general manager of Canic. But then like no, you are probably one of the owner of Ken. So I told him about my Canic situation, started getting Canic feedback. It's like my striker spring is like it will break in that 500 round. But this is this is like very, very early when Canic like started rolling into the competition world in US market. So I, I contacted him and I was like, hey, on Instagram, just like random guys. So oh yeah, you should uh, you guys should just improve your your firing pin. Because right now your firing pin is like Metal injection mode, it's like it will break, and your striker spring is that like oversprung. Like your recoil spring is oversprung as well. So he's like, Oh, okay, we're working on it. And um, 
So right now, for those people who are getting Canik, you see your striker uh, striker pin. Those are CNC ones. Those oh. basically were. Yeah, when I when I told them, they changed it. That's that's why the metal injection mode it's the black one, and then the silver one. You guys can mm -hmm. you check it out. The silver one that you guys see, that's basically the CNC one, which is. At that time, I told him about it back in 2017. So at that time, I started rolling to the Canic Facebook page, Canic community, and I'm like, oh yeah. And they say, Frank, you're cool. Can we can we can we put our local on you? I'm like, sure. <laughs> okay. So that's Canic Community, the Canic Fanatic at that time. And then Canic okay. Nation. Right now. So um they're great people. And then it starts starting from the community member and all the way starting. And funny thing is at 2019, at 2018, I believe. Yeah, 2018, I have a chance to go to SHOT Show. That's also on my bucket list. Again, people, if you have a dream, dream big. That's how the American dream is, right? I yep. am now, now a brand new American citizen. I just become American citizen a couple months ago. Like it's awesome. not it's not just it's not yes thank you congratulations that's awesome man it is awesome it's not like a lot of people like to do it's like they only like talk to talk they didn't walk the walk and i just like you, you you need to do this remember back in 60s 70s or maybe like earlier on those pioneers those immigrants when they when they start to build that american dream what that looks like i feel like a lot of people forget these days and then me i'm just a very simple guy i just want to do this i do it if not, maybe take several years. It's fine. But my end goal is I want to be that way. So, so um, once I start competition shooting and I start to think, I want to be a sponsor shooter. And my dream is I want to be sponsored by Canon. And that's my dream. And, um, yeah, even though it accomplished, and it's it's also very – I'm very, very grateful for those companies that start, like, looking at me. Sprinkle. Springo USA, he, um, they're in Texas. They are, they are the first person, first, first company start looking to Canik because again, me just like random people that, like, hey, I, I want to see if you guys make this kind of stuff. I heard it will uh, use the Walter Spring, but I want to see if you can use it in the Canik Spring. They say, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll send you one to try it out and let, let us know. So. We started with that relationship back in 2017 when I started shooting Canik. And then 20, the end of 2017, I'd be like, Shot Show is coming. Mm. Hey, uh, by the way, Sprinko, are you guys going to Shot Show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, do you want to go? Can I go? I've never been to Shot Show. And then, <laughs> so I've been to Shot Show. And that is the why, that, that is why I have a chance to go to Canik booth. And meet the gentleman over there, gentlemen's gentlemen's and ladies over there from Turkey, and then say, "Hey, I'm just a you know canic shooter. I think I want to be like support by you guys." So they At actually, point. so they actually mm -hmm. sent people from Turkey to Shot Show. Yeah. Wow. Really, it's really interesting that uh, for those imported companies, um, I believe I'll just use uh, Canic as an example because I see the most. When you go to the Canon booth from Shot Show, it's not only people from Century. There's people from Turkey, the engineers from Turkey. Uh, they're probably like marketing people from Turkey, and even like one of the general global general manager from Turkey as well. People from Turkey, they send the crew over there and meet with Century. So technically, the Century booth they they basically separate with Canon section and slash Century. So you will see AKs, you will see. Draco's over there, and then Canon, they have Canon Pistol at the front. So you will see people uh, doing doing deals, doing doing business over there. So yeah, there's people from Turkey. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. I didn't expect that. I just figured Century Arms, but knowing that they actually send representatives from Turkey, that's very impressive. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's the chance I have a time to talk to talk to them and start building a relationship. When they when they went back to Turkey. And I still like trying to wait for the response. I'm like, I still want to get support by you guys. And then I try to like talk to them. No respond, no response from Century Armor that time. And then talk to talk to Kenick, no respond. And funny thing is, I keep posting my social media post with the Kenick fanatic or Kenick Nation, just Kenick uh, group on it on my jersey on my back. Mm -hmm. So um, at 
finally, I'm like out of patience. Well, I'm not really out of patience. I'm just kind of curious again. I'm wondering. So I, I Instagram talk to the the guy that I contact the general manager. And uh, funny thing is, he's like, "Wait, I thought I thought we sponsored you already." I'm like, "Wait, what? <laughs> what? Did you just say you want to sponsor me?" <laughs> like, yeah, I thought I thought we already sponsored you. It's because probably because my logo from the Canic Facebook group, they thought, "Oh, this guy's already sponsored. He's wearing a jersey already." So twenty, I think by the end of twenty eighteen, December, I believe December, we do like back and forth negotiation, and we finally signed a contract with Century Arms and and Canic Turkey. Oh wow! And That's... start a little journey. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right, we're we're into the That's kind awesome. of the meat of the awesome. interview, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna pause for a second. And we're going to make it a little bit more lighthearted, get to know the actual Frank Shu from Taiwan, not mm. not not the Frank the Tank competitive shooter guy. Okay? Okay. All right. Who wants to ask the first question? How you set it up? I'll Go do for it. it, man. Um, all right. Well, the first question is, what is your favorite movie? Oh, movies stumped you know it, it's it's funny funny thing is about the movie i need to get into the american pop culture i if you think about this if i live in america for seven seven years technically i'm only seven years old into the american <laughs> pop culture <laughs> okay so, fair enough so a lot of things that a lot of people talked about movies i never heard about it but i will say it's Everybody knows about this movie. I will say, ooh, this is hard. Um, I would say James Bond franchise. Everything that's James Bond. Okay. My right. my first James Bond okay. is Pierce Brosnan's uh, The World Is Not Enough. All right. Yeah. The first. So I got a follow-up. I got a follow-up. All right, hold on. Okay. I'm going to add on to this. favorite James Bond? Because this is, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is important. Because this could end the interview if you answer incorrectly. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, oh really goodness. Answer to this question. <laughs> oh, we may have to put Leo in the waiting room. <laughs> oh, let, let, me, let, me, let me say this. I know, I know James Bond franchise really well. The first James Bond, Sean Connery, and after that is um, the guy only played play like, play only one episode in uh, Quinn, Queen, whatever that guy. I don't know. Even in know. in, in, uh, in service of Her Majesty, Her Majesty service, whatever. Yeah, the, the guy Australian guy. guy. The Australian yeah. guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Man. after that is uh, Roger Moore, the longest probably, and then Timothy uh -huh. Dalton for two, Pierce Brosnan for four, and then Daniel Craig. Okay. So, wow. Ooh, ooh, let's see. I'm impressed right now. I am very <laughs> impressed. So far, we're good. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, <laughs> To be honest, I will just say I might stick with my first James Bond. Okay. Pierce Brosnan. Okay. He's cool. He's cool. That's fine. If you had said Roger Moore, I would have made you leave. <laughs> oh, I thought you would say Daniel Craig because he's Bond, James Bond. Well, and he's a big baby and doesn't want to do the movies anymore, but that's fine. <laughs> Pierce Brosnan. Okay. I'm okay yes. with that. Okay. okay. I've only seen one James Bond movie. And I saw it in a movie theater in 1980. I went and saw Moonraker. Oh, okay. the Roger Moore yeah. one. That's yep. a very yeah. interesting one. It was well, a good, it was a good movie. Yet, so mm. I did not see that in the theater as I was negative four. Correct. Yes. You're you're a mere child. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Huggy, right. next question. So far, we're good. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So here, here you go, Frank. Next question. What mm. is your favorite book? Encyclopedia Man, doesn't book, count. Any... <laughs> a phone book. <laughs> a phone book. Mm. They don't even make those anymore. <laughs> what book? Man, that, that is hard to, to say. I don't technically read It's the Canic book. Owner's Manual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 that's a good one. Um, let's see. Yes, and yes, I love I love reading I love reading manuals. So 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 like hey, um, it's, it's a like, book. Like a thin one. It's a book. So I will say this. Maybe 
Ah, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm gonna stick with Bible. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. You're with a sick book, All right? Yeah. Oh yeah. boy, technically you don't have to read the entire Bible the entire day, right? It, it only takes like, three oh, years. You're done. Yeah. For that day. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's fair. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's go to this one. What is your favorite music? Ooh. Ooh. Genre. Michael Jackson. MJ. <laughs> oh, the king of pop. Mm. Wow. Yeah. All right. I was really hoping yeah. you were going to say country right. music. Okay. I, okay. Okay. <laughs> country music. I start listening to it and I still can't figure out which one is my favorite. So, but <laughs> Michael Jackson for sure, hands down. And okay. favorite, okay. favorite one will be The Men in the Mirror. Yeah. Okay. Great song. Yeah. Great, go. Great song. There you go. I like it. I like it. How about the Jackson right. 5 then? Go ahead. Ooh, Jackson 5. A, B, C. Only, yeah. Easy as one, two, three. Those famous songs, right? Those famous Jackson 5 songs. But <laughs> Rock Men in the Mirror is still probably, probably my favorite. And It's a great choice. If you don't know my hidden talent, I like to imitate. And you already know that I, I love China. I love China. <laughs> right? So, this is, is, this is fantastic. Okay. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> but I also imitate Michael Jackson as well. Like, um, yeah, when he passed away, and then I started like, oh, this guy is famous. I did not know that. So I started imitating like, Michael Jackson. So every... I don't want to say every, but majority of his hit songs, I can I can imitate exactly where he do the da, he, he part. All right. Yeah. For example, so a hidden you're talent. Gonna make the change for once in my life. That is on point. Boom! Right there. <laughs> We should have done karaoke with Frank at nationals. Son of a no, gun, we oh, missed I'm it. I'm telling you. I might yeah. go to nationals now Dude. just to do karaoke. With yes, me. that's it. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, in. <laughs> I'm down with that one. Well, now you know. Now you know. All right. All right. All right, Huggy, next okay. one. Okay. All right. Next question is going to be, who would you say is your favorite historical figure? Ooh. Historical figure. Hmm. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, and it could be any. You know, there's a couple. Of, yeah, there's there's a couple of people popping my mind, but um, you know what? I will say. I might say JFK. The reason why it just this. His history part is so interesting. Like he basically helped the America to reach the space race, right? And then, but ended up like he got assassinated, and that assassin we still mm -hmm. don't know what's going on. So it's a mystery. But that's why Jeff K. Jeff K. is um he's an interesting guy. I'll I'll just say that he's, he's a good president, and um, I like his story, of course. Right. Of course, JFK is first one popping my mind because he's in the music video in <laughs> Men in the Mirror. There but you go. I was, there I go. probably, but if you really want me to like find someone that I might, my, my favorite figure, ooh, I love history, but um, pinpoint one person is hard. Mm. Yeah. Michael Jackson. Okay. Yo, there it the is. King of the pop. There it is. Yeah. The man, the myth, the legend. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Okay. So now, kind of switching gears a little bit here, a little bit. So what would you say, well, we already know what is your favorite pistol, obviously, mm. um, being that it's a canic. So uh, what what is your favorite caliber uh, in, in bullet? Mm. Rifle, pistol, shotgun, any caliber doesn't yeah. matter. My favorite caliber probably two two three. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
the the reason why two two three is um so if you don't know about uh, my gun history so pistol is literally like when I when I'm when I bought my first gun that's when I start shooting pistol but when I was in the Taiwanese army which is mandatory you have every man eighteen years old have to become a uh, it needs to go serve the military so I was in the army I shot uh, five five six NATO that's basically what we use. Um, the gun that we use is a. When I was in boot camp, we shoot. There is a model called T sixty five K two. It's a it's a long stroke piston system. When they create that, it's a very interesting. Taiwanese create a, a piston system instead of the the gas in, in, uh, gas system here in the state. Yeah. So they they changed that. So when I was in the military. Then you need to you need to learn a trajectory for for five five six, which is a very interesting, very interesting round. Like in twenty five meter, it's it's going to be high, and then when three hundred meter, it's like parallel with the shooter. So it's it's just so interesting to me. And then we only shoot iron sight in Taiwan, so mm -hmm. that's why I think it's a very interesting round. And now I'm shooting. I also shoot multi gun sometimes, so I have a rifle scope right. and. Even with the rifle scope, it's still very interesting, right? Because every time the hold and everything, because it's not a heavy bullet. It's only 55 grain or 60, uh, 70, 77 grain. That's why the shoot is with a long range. It's just so interesting. It's so much to learn about 223 and 556. Five, that's, that's why it's my favorite round. I like to learn stuff. It's interesting. I went ahead and did a quick Google. I mean, it's the exact same M16A2. But you're mm -hmm. saying it's a piston and not gas operated. Yeah, it looks like a M16A2, but it's, yeah, it's that's a piston exactly operated. what it looks like. And that is oh, another cool cool fact on that. When I was in the um, my battalion, I think yeah, my battalion. When I when I finished boot camp, they 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 switched a new gun. So in boot camp, you shoot the old gun, which is T65K2, and in the in the real scenario, in the real army time, I sir, I shoot. T91. And that that gun, you can buy it in the state now. Wolf Ammunition what? have a contract with the 205 Arsenary, Arsenary in Taiwan uh, back in the second desert storm, 2003, 2000, 2002, when, when Bush trying to have a war with Iraq. So they, they mm -hmm. want to ship the ammo. Instead of from the state, they basically contracted with the Asia country who is producing 556 NATO. So that's why they found Taiwan. And Taiwan is producing them some good stuff. So the Wolf, let's see, Wolf 223556 Gold is the ammo from Taiwan Arsenal. And then the, they also have a contract. So they brought up the kit, uh, part kit from Taiwan, T91 part kit, and rebranded it, become Wolf A1. So if you find Wolf A1, you can buy the short, short stroke. Very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see the T ninety one. That's definitely a wow. different look. Yeah, look like an M four carbine. Yeah, the handguards are completely different. It almost looks like mm -hmm. um an HKG series handguard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So go. You can research that in detail for those people who are interested. Technically, it's very interesting that um, I think the T ninety one when they finish finish up and start producing to the army. It's like a couple of years or several years earlier than the HK416 with their with their piston systems. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna interject another question. Mm -hmm. What's the farthest you've shot a rifle? Oh 400 yard. How far? 400 yard and 400. 400 okay, yard 400 in, yards. in multi gun okay. competition. Okay. Yep. Well, just so you know. Give you a little background, Mister Mister uh, Dave up there. He uh, he has a background in uh, long range, uh, long rifle shooting. Uh, he used to be a Ooh. Marine Corps uh, uh, sniper instructor. So, oh, he, uh, nice, he nice, knows nice. His, knows his, yeah, yeah. So he yeah. he knows his stuff. When we ever have questions, that's who we go to first. <laughs> yeah, I'm still learning the short gun stuff. So. <laughs> I'm learning the long gun stuff for sure. Like, well, there we go. The pistol, We're exact opposites. Good. Yeah, because <laughs> right. in Utah, right. if you guys are coming to Utah, we have like a club. They shoot a thousand yards. There's a long range uh, club. They shoot a thousand yards over here. It's like crazy. Nice. One day I might shoot 
Wow. Yeah, there you go. You should. <laughs> All right. It's not hard. All right. Uh, well, you already had mentioned uh, one of the next questions was um, what other shooting sports do you compete in? Now, I know you said multi-gun uh, sport, but is there any other uh, shooting uh, sports that you compete in also? Um, my, my focus is always USPSA. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of, I, I did a little bit still challenge before with my Canik, but I feel like, uh, it's fun. I'll say it's fun, but to, to get my skill and everything, I will say if, if you want to run with the gun, like people. USPSA. That that is probably okay. that is probably the the best sports to do that. And then if you want to run with multi guns, like because uh, I have a PCC, my my wife shoots a PCC, um, and I shoot sometimes two by four. Because okay, the league I was mentioned the multi gun league is uh, United shoot Shooting league? Sport. Yeah, United Shooting Sports League USSL. So they have a multi gun division. So it's not necessarily a traditional three gun. You can shoot traditional three gun. They also have a two by four, meaning in one stage you can choose two guns to shoot that stage. You can choose a, a rifle and a shotgun, or maybe a pistol and a shotgun, or maybe pistol and rifle, or rifle and pistol. So you can choose whatever the conf configuration you want to shoot, and even PCC as well. So that's something, something also new. So that's what I what I shoot the most. These two, so USPSA and multi gun. Multi gun. Okay. So all right. Mm -hmm. Very good. So. USPSA is having a two gun national in June. It's PCC yeah. and a pistol. Have you considered that? Uh, very, very good question right there. Uh, Another stumper. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am not good with iron side. Let's just say that. Um, but iron they, side with pistol, I'm not good. But I, but I understand they're only having two categories open and limited open mm -hmm. anything with an optic so you put optics on your whatever pistol whatever rifle and then limited being iron sight so i mean you would you could still run you just yeah. do open yeah and i will i will say this i haven't shot any uh uspsa formats uh, multi-gun match so okay that will be a new rule set for me, because maybe they're similar, maybe they're not, but I just haven't touched it yet. So right. that's why. So maybe one day if I prepare, I, I will definitely shoot that. But but right now, I still want to focus on USPSA. I, I can see that um, a two-gun national where it's PCC and pistol becoming a, a hot item. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Um, okay. Let's go with our next Welcome question back. here. And uh, this is going to be. <laughs> yeah. uh, do you recall your first USPSA match and how it went? Oh, yes. Um, Sounds like a good story. Oh, that's a good story. So. <laughs> My first USPSA match in March, I signed up as an open gun. I signed up as the open division because I don't know the rule set. I don't know there is a division called carry optic. So I signed up as an open, and when I show up, there's like, oh, uh, you're shooting a minor. You're shooting a nine millimeter. Huh? Why? Why do you want to shoot open? I was like, I don't know. Isn't isn't the general rule say if you have an optic that basically you go into open division and can it have a little charging handle and on the SFX? Mm -hmm. So I was running a little charging handle as well. And then so they're like, okay, you want you sure you want to run open? I'm like, uh, it's okay. The first time. I'm just trying to have a good experience over here. <laughs> so so that would be my first USPSA. And then funny thing on the second USPSA, I started looking into carry optic division. But funny thing is that year and 2017, they also changed the rule. In February, which is carry optic, no longer ten rounds. It's like one hundred and forty millimeters. Okay, of right, the magazine. right. Yeah. So I was loading ten rounds, and then on the mat, people was like, 
Frank, why are you doing this? Why are you like reloading like production? I'm like, isn't that in the rule book set? Well, that's in February. We just changed that. I'm like, oh, okay. So I was so I was doing so dumb in two months. That's my first USPSA match experience. It's just funny, funny, funny. It's like I don't know any rule. So then I decided, you know what? I will become an RO in the future, and I will know the rules. So right now I'm certified as a CRO in USPSA as well. So I guess <laughs> oh. initially, I guess carry optics was really production optics. At that time, yes. Oh, yeah. Interesting. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they changed the rule in 2017. February 2017, they become whatever the uh, – not the U.S. – not the carry optic what we see, but starting to become the, the carry optic what we see now. Because okay. right now, you can put a really – you can put an uh, aftermarket trigger. You can do a gas pedal, but it's not the gas pedal like the norm, the normal open gun. It's a gas pedal like uh, it's part of your take take out pin slide. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm actually taking one of my SFX guns, um, the one I had been shooting in competition the last two years, mm -hmm. and I'm going to make it an open minor gun. Um, because oh, I have, fun. yeah, my new my new carry optics gun is the whiteout version of mm. the SFX. So mm. that's going to be my new carry optic gun. And I switched everything over, and I'm taking my older SFX, which has probably twenty twenty five thousand rounds on it, and making that a just a fun open miner. I'm putting the. Um, are you familiar with uh, the Tony system? So I ordered I a I ordered a frame weight for the front mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. a thumb stop. Yeah. So I've got that coming, Magwell, uh, some other stuff, and I'm I'm literally the only thing I have I'll have to buy at some point is more of a an open holster, mm -hmm. so everything fits well, and uh, you know just for fun, local yeah. matches I'll go and. On occasion, shoot minor nine open. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. Just for oh. fun, right? Yeah, exactly. The important question yeah. is: Any of your stuff going to be chrome? <laughs> so that is a question oh. for this guy over here, <laughs> and no for me. <laughs> okay. No, Frank, I'm just Frank, curious what as to your thoughts on chroming the slide of of your canic. Like, would you think to yourself, hey, man, I'm going to chrome my slide and see what people think? <laughs> That's a no. That's the, that is a no. It's not necessarily a no because when, when you start using it, it, it will start, like, oxidizing. And then just fade out. The color just start like, fade out. It's right. not shiny anymore. Right. Otherwise, yeah, you're right. blinding people oh, on the I, line. I think that might be against the rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys podcast Frank, follows just, just, on, on like showing firearm and anything. Oh, Huggy shot oh, yeah, me one time shot. already, so it's fine. You're good. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, speaking of, speaking of which, no, no. Let me let me. God. Okay. Um, what now I would next done, to him again. First of all, this safe. Is, look. Oh, should I, should I point it this way? Point it like normal. <laughs> There you Literally. go. No. Okay. Turn oh, it, look it, at that. It. That's uh, free, yes. uh, the, 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 the cool fire system. Yeah. That's correct. I purchased a cool fire system so that um do more dry fire training uh, in damage. my basement and everything like that with the, <laughs> yeah, so I won't do any damage. Uh, so that, you know, during this ammo shortage, this is coming a lot more useful for me, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people were at first, they were like, oh, wow, you, it's a gimmick. You know, you're just wasting your money on a gimmick. However, I do like this cool fire laser system due to the fact that it gives you that recoil. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, again, I tell people that, yeah, it, it is not the actual full recoil of a nine millimeter bullet. However, it gives you enough that it makes you, reacquire your target site so you know it really works on your grip and your you know holding and everything so um i love this system so far so good only only thing i've been noticing is that with multiple shots this does get uh, slow down a little bit it gets a little sluggish because it gets so cold 
um, uh, from the uh, CO that's being uh, dispersed out of the system. However, very nice. However, now I'm going to jump from that subject to the fact of how Leo brought up the chroming uh, subject. I had talked about just the slide up here because I was like, oh man, that would look cool like the Mandalorian would carry because it's a nice looking gun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's how that subject came up. <laughs> And well, I have, that, I have that's, nothing that's, but haters. That's good. I have He's haters. Being very polite. See, I'm dreaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm dreaming big. I'm dreaming big like you, Frank. Uh, oh, goodness. Dream smaller. <laughs> Frank's oh, like, oh, don't drag me into this. That's good. <laughs> Frank, you're too polite. We get it. Oh. We know where you stand on this. It's, no, it's that, being that, polite. We get it. So my gun also have the battle wound Terracote on it. So I, mm. I realize... I realized that the tungsten on my holster wear, I just decided, you know what, just just do a battle womb on that. So I have that battle womb canic. I don't know if that can see it really, really clear on the camera, but yeah, that's the battle womb center. I like that. Yeah, like but that. that actually looks good, Frank. Yeah, that does. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> that looks good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I've seen that. I've I've seen that on a few canics. I, I like that look. It looks good. Yeah, the distressed mm -hmm. like that actually looks aesthetically pleasing. But not the clone one. No. I'm I'm going to. We're, we're not going to. I'm going to have you ask. I'm going to have you guy. You ask the guys in Turkey to make me one slide that's chrome, <laughs> and I'll be the only guy to carry. <laughs> Right. Isn't, isn't it it's easy to do that? You just do take the Dremel and then just polish everything and then just become yeah. there you go. Yeah. You can do it yourself. Yeah. Okay. It'll look even I'll better if you do it for free. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Or just, just get a just All right. get in contact with some machining company and have them make one out of stainless steel. Oh yeah, exactly. There you can also go. do that as well. Be eight hundred pounds, but it's yeah. all good. <laughs> all right. <laughs> But hey, I don't have to worry need about a new like, spring to operate that slide. Yeah, exactly. We know exactly. a guy that can get him a spring, though. <laughs> we do. We got a we got a spring guy. Yeah, that's right. Right there, I like it. So, right. yeah. <laughs> so Frank, what is your? Um, I mean, we ran into you at nationals, but what is your current classification in USPSA? I'm a master class and carry optic. Okay. And, 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 um, and okay, that's another funny story. So, so at my off season, usually I shoot PCC because PCC is fun. So, but PCC is so easy to get classification. So, so when I was a C class shooter in carry octave, when I just started, I was A class in PCC. And then oh, wow. my local GM, Grandmaster, and his name is Kenny, and he shoot limited. He's, he's great. And he's like, Frank, I'm going to kick your ball if you become a GM and PCC nine carry optic. You need to shoot the real gun. You need to be a man. I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay, I'll do that. Impressive. So yeah. he's he's he's, a, he's funny because because we're 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 friends. So that's why he's like, okay, because he, his dad basically owned the the club, basically the president of the club. So I go there, and then that's why we have some good friends. So he just like, Frank, I'm going to kick your ball if you like become a Grandmaster in PCC, and then you still a C class in in carry optic. I'm going to laugh at you. I'm going to kick your ball. I'm like, okay. Then I will switch. So after that, I become like stop shooting PCC, and I basically focus on carry optic. So that's why right now I am master in carry optic, legit master. Not 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 sandbagging. People are <laughs> calling me sandbaggers all the time. I'm just like my mental. It's just not really well when I shoot classification. So that, that mm, just... okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now people just like start saying like Frank, you should you should become a GM because some of the performance I shot, uh, for example, last year 2020 area one in Idaho, I shot a 97 percent seven place in in the whole carry optic division, and people just said that's a GM run. Niels, Niels told me, I, I told Niels, hey, congratulations on your production win. And he said, oh, congratulations on your GM run. I'm like, <laughs> okay, thank you. 
So <laughs> now, that's how we like tease each other. And and that was one of my questions going to be later. What kind of relationship do you and Nils have? So Nils is our team captain. Okay. So he he basically will take the feedback and then he will he will basically talk to Turkey. He will maybe travel to Turkey and talk to the engineers over there. So in fact, he is in Turkey right now. So, oh, right now he is. Oh yeah, he, he is in Turkey right now. Um, so we, so our relationship it's more like so it, it's it's interesting in competition sport. Like right? you can see as an individual sponsor, but but you can also see they are team shooting. Which it which give you an example. Max Michel from Sig and Lena Michelet from Sig. They're all sponsored by different company, but they all sponsored by Sig. So you can still see them as an individual shooter sponsored by Sig, but you can also see them like Max Michel is the team captain and Leon Mitchell is a team member. So it's kind of the same situation. Like Niels is a team captain and I'm just a team member. And then my focus and his focus will be a little bit different. My focus will be, I would like to see what kind of aftermarket parts on the market that provide for Ken. Yeah. And if I see, if I see one, I basically will tell Niels and say, Hey, should we just try this? Or I will basically talk to Turkey and then say, hey, there is something in in the in, in the state that is aftermarket parts. And then that's why the, the trigger, the, the sprinkle system, it's now in oh, so the sprinkle system is in Turkey now. So people can buy it in Turkey from Sprinkle. So oh, can I basically wow. import some parts over there and some Taylor Freelance parts as well. So, That's cool. So I basically don't focus on aftermarket part on see how capable of this little can it can do with these little gadgets. And then Neil is basically focused on uh, performance on the gun, how the gun will perform, and maybe some of the adjustment and everything, and he will get feedback. So it's kind of like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. That is now. I know that Nils had mentioned that they're working on an, a production gun that would be legal for Ipsic. Mm -hmm. Is that a totally separate gun, or are they just going to take like an SF Elite and modify it? Do you know? Very good question. Next one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving well, right along. Well, I know the answer to that. Yeah. I know what that means. <laughs> No, no, well, to be honest, I will just say we don't know yet until when Neil's come back with with idea. Because right now we don't know anything. They they probably will still develop. Maybe they're done. I don't know. All I can say is that's a good question. Move on. <laughs> You're right. right. Any like other any way. other question that I can answer like right away? I can try it. But this is fun. <laughs> Dave, try one more question. What is your curious about Kenneth? Just, just shoot me a question about maybe what's going on with 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 any other. I don't know. Shoot me the question. I'll I'll answer you. Can you get me a TP forty? Good question. Yeah. Next question. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, got it. <laughs> How about a steel cannon? All right, next question. Oh, that's a good question. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting, like, the, the way that how how we work, like, we, we we know stuff, but we could just can't say it. So I can I cannot uh, confirm or deny any question that you just got, the guy said. It, it's all a good idea because Canik, it's a really, really good company that will get customers' feedback. The reason why we have the Strikers Spring, why we have um, some of the part that you have, it's... It's uh, kind of like a nickel boron coating. It's because you guys feedback. People polish their their trigger bar all the time. My trigger bar is still the old trigger bar. It's like dark. It's not the the shiny finish like, like everybody else. It's right. because Kenneth is really really good taking people's feedback and then and then change on the next gun. So we we heard so many things like why Kenneth didn't shoot shoot a forty five? Why Kenneth didn't come up with a so and so gun? steel or whatever it's a good feedback all we can say it's a good feedback all we do is just take the feedback and let the high people decide so let turkey people decide what they want to do well and, and i kind of understand so, i mean from from canic standpoint you don't know how popular your gun is going to be in the united states if it's a dud mm -hmm. why would you spend all the time manufacturing different calibers 
But now it's made a huge imprint on the market. Um, I mean, as you know, this is the first time that the USPSA survey included Canik as a manufacturer. So exactly. me and Huggy, we both shoot Canik, so we checked the Canik box. And mm -hmm. it showed up in the statistics, so it's growing. I mean, Jason Bradley, number two, carry optics right yeah. behind Max Michelle, shoots a Canik. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. And then, and then I, I will say this: this is kind of a fun fact. So when I first got my Canik back in 2016, yeah, 2016, they there there is basically a TP40 at that time, right? But it just it just didn't a big hit because at that time people are still focused on nine, not forty, because forty, yes, yeah. You, 40 in major division, but major like limited division or something, right? But but because it's not a good hit, because Canik is just very, very, very small at that time. But now it's just like everybody knows Canik. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting mm -hmm. huge. Mm -hmm. My local club, when I first when I shoot first USB, I say I'm the only one shoot Canik. People are just like, ah, oh, cheap gun doesn't last forever. And then three years, four years later, I have I see. I see people come and go, maybe a couple of people try and shoot shoot Canik, but but we have at least four or five people in our local club that shoots Canik, that has Canik. So I'm like, well, there you go. Canik it's growing. Canik it's growing. I have to say I agree with you on that because Dave and I kind of ran into the same thing. Uh, a lot of people were kind of like, what is that? And you say, oh, we were like, it's a Canik. They're like, never heard of it. And I just know just this past year at a lot of the local matches, I've seen several other people showing up with Canics. Yep. You know, so yeah. it's it's been very uh, interesting to see the growth that they have uh, have made in the marketplace. So um, here's a question for you. Now, the um, optic uh, footprint, are they going to make more or – other optic footprints. Good question. Or the very good question. <laughs> Let's move on to the next question. I don't know. I think it's a good feedback. Like right uh, now, there's more and more optics right now, right? Um, people, I see right. people giving give us feedback on the Seymour, the RTS three or RTS two. I forgot which model. It's not fit on the Canon, even though the Canon plate on right. plate number three or number four, it does say it's for Seymour, but. It just give you like the low at the front, right. so it's it's not good. So that means that we can take that feedback for sure and see on the next on the next batch or maybe the next generation come up with a better plan. Not something I can answer because that's right. a feedback. Right. Yeah. Right, and I understand it because I had purchased the uh, Grace Optic M1 or the Grace M1 Optic. Uh, thinking it would fit mm -hmm. on the SFX. And once I got the optic, I went to go put it on there. I tried every footprint, nothing worked. And I'm like, yeah, no. Okay. So JB won't. Uh, to read. <laughs> they didn't have anything. They had nothing in there saying it would not fit an SFX. Mm. So, I mean, it tells you what footprint. What did they find print? Let's see. Well, it had multiple footprints in there. Love the training manual. Let's see. This is an elite combat, but they should have different. <laughs> like what page? It's right around page twenty, point. I want to say. <laughs> page twenty. I think that's right. Oh, look at you guys. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> Boom! Boom! <laughs> so, guys, okay, remember, I'm also a, a Utah certified concealed carry license instructor and also an NRA pistol instructor. Remember, read your training manual because there it's it is. Important. Just like I know people yeah. don't read card manuals, but please, because I, I see so many people are asking on Facebook, on just asking random, like at least 10 every single day, what optic will fit on plate number one or vortex? What is that number for this, guys? Page number 20 on, on your training, on your on your manual, it shows what popular yep. optic and popular play that will fit on the can. Um, I have literally taken a picture of that and posted it when they ask those stupid questions so they can see the page number right there in your book. But I, 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 I won't blend it. It probably says that too. Yeah, I won't blend it because <laughs> I me, I never retrain. I, I never read like owner's manual. On car, I never read owner's manual. Does anybody read, read the owner's manual on their cards? I Only don't. when I have to. 
Yeah, all yeah. you have, to have a problem. Yeah. Absolutely. Then I go to that yeah. page. <laughs> but I feel like that's just the, the education thing. Like and and you talk and seal license course, you do have to tell them read the owner's manual. You need to teach them how to read the owner's manual. Because oh, wow. if you want to be a responsible gun owner, hey, be your owner's manual. So that's something in Utah they we, we teach them. I mean, because like uh cool. I believe it was in there too. It tells you you can shoot plus P, but not plus P plus, if I remember correctly. So it even yeah, tells you what that is ammo you can shoot out of it, you know, what plates work. Mm -hmm. It is very important. I mean, if you like your eyesight and your face the way it looks, you might want to shoot the correct ammo out of it. As you're getting down to the nitty gritty, man. <laughs> I did I did see, Frank, did you see the picture someone posted? Uh, I think it was a oh, mechanic yeah. page where uh, the ammo blew his gun up. Yeah. Yeah, with the factory round, and then for some reason, just kaboom. Yeah. But the yeah. good thing about the gun, you can see how Kanek is really sturdy. Even it's kaboom, but it just yep. just a little crack over here. And yeah, I was, in, I was I was impressed fine, that it held he? together. Yeah. I'm curious about the barrel, but he didn't. He never showed the barrel. He only showed the chamber. So right. Yeah. He only showed, he showed the barrel pictures. and see if there's a bolt or anything. Because if we see the barrel and then still function, I mean, like. Hey, Kenny really makes good guns. Yeah. And which they they do make good guns. Right. That's a catastrophic failure there. But did he mm -hmm. die though? No. But did he die? Yeah, he's fine. No, nah, he's fine. Whatever. I would like to know. There's a lot of questions I would have about that. Was it steel casing, brass? You know what I mean? I like think it was it was brass because I can see the chamber. The, oh, the that's casing right. Still stuck there. Yeah. It's, that's it's right. Yeah, you could. There's just a lot of questions about that for a. For, oh, but it was a factory reload. Mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I wonder if it was a case failure or overcharge. It's just interesting. High primer or anything. We don't know. Well, maybe a squid. And then just the overall length of the, of yeah. the case. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Because because Kenneth's overall length is pretty long, actually. You can load it really long. My, I load, usually I load the 1.1 1 .1, uh, on my reload. But um, I realized, you know what? Let me try stretch it longer a little bit. So I now like low 1.135. 1 Just yeah, standard we, like everybody. It's still good. We did find there's a limit. It, there well, is a limit. Yeah, there is, is, is. a limit. And we also found that it really depends on the bullet manufacturer because mm -hmm. Huggy's we the one. Loading. Huggy, yeah, and, and, and I were working together with loading stuff. And he does all the actual loading. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when we switched bullets, we found that the shape of the bullet changed and enough. The bullet profile, yeah. Yep, mm -hmm. that it affected the overall length. And we actually had to shorten the overall length in order for it to not, because we both had squibs at Nationals. Oh, well, really? we didn't actually, what it was is um, we ended up having a failure to feed completely so the slide wouldn't go home all the way. So... If nothing would happen, and when we pulled it back, obviously the round got wedged in there, and then you just couldn't chamber around. So mm. that, mm. but we found out that the problem was the actual it got caught in the bullet. lands. Yeah. Well, so. that's 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 good. Um, I think. Let's see. I I am loading gallon, and then I think they know the situation, so that they kind of taper out a little bit on the on the bottom of the bullet profile so they taper a little bit so it's a little bit easier to to low a little bit longer yeah there's a limit every gun has a limit yeah. cz is the shortest for sure but there is a limit for canic but so well, far i'm loading my gallant gallant for more than twenty thousand, maybe yeah more than twenty thousand rounds no problem and what what did we switch to yeah, I mean, uh huggy uh, I don't remember. You mean lengthwise? No, no, no. Who was the manufacturer of the zombie bullets? Oh, oh, that's a uh, Eggleston. Eggleston. There you uh, go. Eggle Eggleston Edition is who we switched to. Uh, we were shooting blue bullets at first, but then we switched to that mm. because we could actually get them uh, a lot quicker and a lot sooner. Um, plus, they the color was different, so that way we could see the difference between our bullets and everybody else's bullets, because everybody else was was blue. And like, is that mine or is that somebody else's? You know. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and the shape of those so, Eggleston yeah, it's, it's bullets—they're more, they're fatter, higher. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it when I was loading them, I was loading them at the first at the blue bullet spec, and we were doing at 1.125. But again, because of the shape, it was getting caught in the lands because it was mm. too too long and too fat. So when we would pull it, you know, when you actually would rack the round out, it would actually separate the bullet from the brass. So then you just had powder going everywhere, you know. Um, so we learned that lesson. And that's when we uh, found out that uh, with Eggleston bullets, you have to load them at 1.089 uh, in length uh, for them to actually function properly. You can uh, plunk them in the barrel, spin them and everything like that just as well. You know, so and I was we were doing that and I was like even caged and everything. but. Just now we learned that lesson of the length of the different types of bullets, you know, uh, what you're using. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Fun experience. Yeah, cost us. <laughs> so, and, and I and cost I saw you. Had, oops, sorry. And and Frank, going no, back for just a funny. second. I saw you had posted some videos on um, social media where you've been teaching the Utah um, mm -hmm. carry yeah. classes. Do you? Gotta go. Oh, okay. They're ten minutes out. We gotta get ready. Okay. That's my <laughs> wife. <laughs> Hello. Uh... <laughs> well, we don't mean to uh... hold you, but we wanted to. That's yep. what I was going to give you a chance to do. If you want, go ahead and plug your company and what you teach and all of that. Oh yeah. So. I have a little little online shop called Frank the Tank Shooting. Dot com and uh, what we do is um, we basically try to find some great company that make aftermarket parts for Kenick and uh, we also like looking, we also like looking for more as well so like any accessories or maybe like cleaning mats and those kind of stuff we are looking we're looking for like people willing to partner it up and everything so so right now there is a little shop online to think shooting.com and then we also do, um, let's see, do, 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 do. we also do like Utah Concealed Carry License. We also do uh, basic shooting course and also a, what's that called? The intro to competition class. So basically like like introduction. We're not doing like JJ Ricasa, like hardcore right. class. It's, it's like <laughs> my intro. If you don't know anything, hey, I will show you anything. The, of course, you can find this information online, but if you want like a professional shooter to like, basically show you the way, give you a like, right way to start, that's that's what we do. Okay. Yeah. How can people get in touch with you uh, for any information that they might have questions about? So if they have any questions, they can simply use, use the, chat, uh, the chat feature and the website. They can do that. Or they can email me at uh, from info at franktankshooting.com. So there's multiple ways to do that. And if you want to find me, social media, my Instagram will be pew pew tank, P E W P E W T A N K, so pew pew tank. Or you can just find Frank the Tank um, on Facebook. Panic Frank the Tank, you will find that on Facebook as well. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. It was great. We having should you do on this break. again. Cool. This is this is fun. It is fun. Yeah, yeah. A we should absolutely. Because I love talking. <laughs> we'll do it without getting you in trouble with your wife. <laughs> yes. 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 Exactly. Yeah. We don't want yeah, that. We, we just have a baby. That that's also uh, one of the reasons why. It's probably like okay, it's time. It's time for you now. I understand. That's I don't. You probably can't hear that. Home, the movie is playing in the background because. I watch that every day now with my four-year-old and my eight-month-old. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Mine are 21 and 18, so I don't understand at all. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I, I really enjoy like, talking with you guys, and thank you for the opportunity to give thank me you. Like, to talk. Thanks for coming off. Right yeah. And then we should yeah, do it again. Maybe something. Abs yeah. Absolutely. Yes, sir.
We will. Yes. <laughs> All right. And for those people, have a wonderful day. And hopefully we'll see you guys on the next episode. Yes, sir. Woo! Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. Appreciate it. No problem. Thank you, see guys. You. Have a wonderful Thank night. Thank you. You too. Okay. Bye. Beep, 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 beep. Until next time. Don't be a little bitch. Yeah.